a lot of people can take people being straight up. He's one of them people that can. So let me ask you a question. How how long before you started working with him did you start to see like red flags and did you know like, damn, this, this shit here look kind of crazy? Was it like immediate or was it like he gained your trust and you started vibing and you started seeing shit? Or was it like off the rip you knew like, hey, something up with him? Nah, it definitely wasn't off the rip. You know what I'm saying? Because just like everybody else, when I first got with him, I was amused. You know, I was with a young black man, you know what I'm saying? Making a whole lot of money and a young black man who spoke his mind. You know, it's been times where we've been places and people will feel like, yo, what you doing here? And he was like, yo, what you talking about what I'm doing here? Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm supposed to be here. So you got to get over that first of being like happy that you around with somebody that you could be yourself. So it's almost you know inspirational saying? in the beginning, right? It's definitely inspirational. You, you come on. I've been around the, I've been around the world three or four times. I'm from Harlem. I'm from Polo Ground. I done went from Harlem to Hollywood. You understand? We, you gotta understand. We living together. So I'm not even coming home. I'm, I'm, I'm living in Beverly Hills three weeks out the month. I'm living on Star Island three weeks out the month. So. It takes you a lot to say, okay, this ain't this ain't where I want to be, and, and 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 I would say like the first relationship that I seen him get into, and I seen that it kind of rubbed me the wrong way, but I wasn't in enough to be able to have that conversation. Right, you know what I'm saying? So it wasn't until about five years in that I was able to have that conversation, and me and him used to have different conversations like that. And when you see somebody trying to get better or say that they're trying to get better, you kind of hope. You ever, you ever been in a relationship and it's like, I'm, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. It's like, you know, you telling your girl, I'm going to change, I'm going to change, I'm going to change. You living on, a, you hoping on a change. It's like, you know be, it's like being with a bitch who's like on coke or something. She exactly. Like, yeah, she's like, I'm gonna get over it. I'm gonna get over it. And then one day you realize, damn, this bitch is a cokehead, bro. Like, that's just what it is. <laughs> right. And it gets worse. <laughs> you know, instead of it getting better, it starts to get worse. And as it's getting worse, you getting older. So as you getting older, you getting wiser, and you understand, okay, this shit ain't gonna stop. You know what I'm saying? None of this shit is going to stop because it's nobody there to stop it. And this person is becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. Mm -hmm. So if you become becoming stronger and stronger and stronger, what's there to make you stop? You know what I'm saying? Like what, what, what I feel like what he's going through now, that's enough to make you stop. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But if you ain't never went through this shit before and everything you going through gets swept under the rug, it ain't no reason for you to stop. Bonds ain't going to make me stop. Bonds is just another security dude. Now I see that. You know what I'm saying? But when you live in it and you going through it, that person knows how to make you feel like, yo, you ain't going to never got to worry about nothing because this is what they telling you. This is what you seeing. So each and every day, I'm not going to lie, you hope that that person wakes up the next morning and a red light went off in their head and say, yo, I got to treat a nigga better. Oh, I got to treat a person better. Oh, I got to do this. So that's what you're hoping. And then you get to the point where you say, yeah, nah, nigga ain't going to never change. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So one of the main things that happened was I, I got diabetes, right? I was, in, uh, I was in Spain somewhere, and I kept going to the bathroom like every 10 or 15 minutes. And I'm like, what the fuck do I keep going to the bathroom for? Somebody said, yo, you know, if you go to the bathroom a lot, you get diabetes. Because you got to remember, we was traveling and moving so much. It was places that we would be at that you wouldn't even drink the water. You know what I'm saying? Or they say, yo, if you're from the United States, the water going to make you sick. Hell yeah. You know what I'm I've saying? I've been to Mexico a few times and got sick as hell off that water. Oh, for the water. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. you end up drinking sodas and juices mm -hmm. all fucking day long. So that's one of the things that happened. So I looked at it as like, that was like one of the ways that God got me out my situation because I had, I was starting to get sick in the situation. Like I was starting to like wake up in the morning, damn, B, I'm still here. Even though I'm in an exotic country or I'm in an exotic place, I'm like, damn, I'm still here because the energy, the energy was off. You know what I'm saying? Everything that was going on around you was off and you were expected just to stand there and do what you supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what's acquired of you. Right. You know what I mean? 
So, you know, that, that was the, one of the things that made me say, okay, it's time to go. So I used my sickness as one of the reasons, like, yo, you know I can't be traveling with you, and you know I can't be doing this, that, and the other. The doctor said I need to be in a stable place. I need to get a certain amount of sleep. I need a certain so type of food. you were trying to pull away. I was trying to pull away. You know what I'm saying? So what I did was I found that they had an opening in Ciroc, right? And I said, yo, you know, with being next to you for the last 12, 13 years, and you having this brand right here, I could go over to Ciroc, and there's nobody that wouldn't believe what I'm saying because we got a million pictures together all over the world. So that's what made me go over there and create the Ciroc Boys. You know what I'm saying? Because I knew that everybody would believe my story as far as Ciroc and being next to Puff. And that's where we was able to uh, start that. Because the first thing he told me, I ain't going to lie, First thing he told me was, yo, you know, if you go over there, you ain't going to make the same amount of money that you're making with me because they control what I can pay you. So I said, damn, be out of everything. That's the first thing you're going to tell me. Like, you ain't going to tell a nigga you're going to miss him. You ain't going to tell a nigga nothing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because people don't realize it's personal now. You know what I'm saying? You've been with a person 12, 13 years straight, living with them three weeks out the month. Like, it's personal. I don't give a fuck what you're going through. It's personal now. So when he told me that, I said, okay. So I had to think of something and create You think that something. a part of him was like emotional about losing you and that's why he said that? To try to say, yo, don't go. I want to think that. But yo, Noah Puff, man, he's emotionless, man. He's emotionless, man. And one of the things that stick in my mind that I never paid attention to, that I pay attention to is he said, I don't know how to be a friend. Damn. You know what I'm saying? Like he said, I don't know how to be a friend. He said, you know how you and your man Paulie got 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 the homies uptown, and you know y'all go back on checking. Like we used to take boxes of Sean John back to the block right. to make sure niggas was right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yo, here, B, here, B. Open up my trunk, dudes, and run up on me. Yo, Barnes, you got got you. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, only thing I care about is my bitches. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't know how to be a friend. So, you know, that's that's one of the things that stick in my mind. So part of me gets mad, but then the other part of me says, he already told you who he was. Right. You just didn't want to believe it, or you just ain't want to see it, or you just believing in your belief 10 toes down that the next person is going to be 10 toes down. But that person told you already they wasn't going to be. And God bless the dead, uh, you might have heard a wolf. Right? Wolf was his main security, yeah, yeah. ahead of his security. Wolf had told me one day in Atlanta, he said, Barnes, be careful. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, be careful what? He said, be careful, old boy, yo. You know what I'm saying? He don't care about nobody. And to tell you the truth, you feel like, yeah, okay, but that's not going to happen to me. Like, mm -hmm. you don't believe that's mm -hmm. going to happen to you. you right, like, we all, nah. none of us do. Yeah. We always do. You know, until it happens yeah. to you. Then you be like, nah, that shit ain't gonna happen to me. Because you know how 10 toes down you are. And then shit that affects you don't affect them. Like if you spent Chris, like it's been times my daughter came over and was sitting there playing with Mary J. Blige. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, oh my God, like dad, you know, your <laughs> friends are awesome. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So you think shout out to Queen Mary. Stuff that means something to you, like even waking up, like he said, on Christmas. That's personal stuff. You know what I'm saying? Like, if you you wake up with a nigga family on Christmas, that's personal. If you opening up presents that they brought you on Christmas at their house, you think that's personal. But the puff is not personal. It's business. You know what I'm saying? Do you feel like a part of him was like or is like this because he doesn't feel like he can trust anyone? Because if you look at everything that's going on, right? You know, allegedly a lot of uh, stuff occurred, right? Mm -hmm. But if you look at it from a different angle and from the way that other people are trying to look at it, right? Because you're definitely going to have two sides anytime. Right. And right. they're saying, you know what? Like, who could he trust? Everybody uh, that he was supposed to trust has turned their backs on him. They all walked away from him. Right. Um, you know, they're making all these wild accusations against him. And he does. Do you feel there's something in him that's like it's hard for him to trust the people? Around him, he's afraid to trust the people around him. He doesn't want to get I, hurt. I, I definitely believe that 
like before I came, you know, you're always going to have watches and chains and different things that turn up missing and stuff like that. So that trust issue as far as the materialistic stuff is there. You know what I'm saying? The trust issue as far as your mental and as far as your emotional might be there when it comes to woman because you don't know if a woman really love you or not right. or do she just love. But I don't think that that makes you the person that you are. I think the person that he is, like sometimes, you got to look at it like this. I tell people all the time, they be like, yo, Barnes, why you ain't pick up your phone? Why you ain't do this, that, and other? And I tell people, yo, if the little bit of success or whatever you want to call it that I was going through, you know what I'm saying, running, running Ciroc for them years and running from city to city and town to town made, made my head a little bit big. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to be real. It made right. my head a little bit big. I'm Roger Barnes. I'm Ciroc Boy Barnes. I'm, I'm hosting parties in Dubai. I went to Dubai before Puff even went to Dubai and hosted two parties. Right. I'm in Lagos. I'm in Nigeria. And if that little bit of stuff that I did makes me not reachable for people, imagine, imagine what he he's going through. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I always tried to give that excuse to him and say, yo, imagine he probably getting 10,000 calls a day, 10,000 people asking for stuff, this, that, and the other. But that don't make you the person that you are. I think he's arrogant. You know what I'm saying? I think the money made him arrogant. And it's like Nicky Barnes. Nicky Barnes didn't go down until he beat those cases. John Gotti didn't go down until he beat those cases. And what they all got in common, they both felt like they was untouchable. You know what I'm saying? So imagine being a young black dude from Mount Vernon, you know what I'm saying, and becoming a billionaire and, 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 and outliving the Suge Knights and the everybody else that went through everything you become feeling like you untouchable. But this world has a way of showing you, nah, everything that you have, we gave you. And everything that you have, we can take away. You're not untouchable. So you need those people around you that's going to keep you grounded so that you can, and he, like I said before, he don't have none of that. So I, I definitely think that's what became as far as trust. When you look around, I don't have nobody around me. When you look around, I got a bunch of corporate people around me because you people say hire people that's smarter than you for the things that you can't do. And that's true, but those are also the same people that's going to steal from you because they smarter than right. you. And they know how to hide mm -hmm. what they took. So then when you find out that a million dollars is missing or 500000 now you start to look at everybody that same way when in reality that's not how it should be.